Hello, it's Keith here, and this is lesson one of the platform specific series of my 68,000 programming tutorials. Now, if you're not familiar with my tutorials, we've done this with the Z80s and now it's time for the 68,000s. What we're going to do is we're going to go through each of the systems in turn and we're going to learn how to do the same thing on each one. So today we're going to start by doing bitmap graphics on the X68000. We're going to learn how to print this hello world message and show this Chibiko character. This is the character from my Chibiakamas game. And we're going to learn how to do this today on the 68,000. But then later on, we're going to learn how to do the same thing on all of the other systems as well. And wherever possible, we're going to use the same code to do the same job. And so we'll write one piece of code with basically plug-in modules that will handle the specifics of that platform. And that's how I did my Grime 68000 game, where the game would run on five different systems and we could play on all of them with one common code base and just custom graphics routines that acted as drivers for the underlying hardware. So today we're going to learn how to switch the 68000 into its graphics modes. We're going to learn how to print the text characters to the screen. This is a one bit per pixel bitmap that we use on all of the systems. This has been literally copied from the Z80 systems. It was originally in Chibiakamas. It's now on all of the Z80 systems. It's on 6502 systems and it's going to be on all of these 68,000 systems as well. So we're using a common one bit per pixel bitmap to do that. But then we're also using this platform specific bitmap here. And if you want to be able to export bitmaps to various systems, what you need to get is my Acro Sprite editor because this will export to the native format of each of the systems and it's what I use in these tutorials. So you can download my tutorial code, download my Acro Sprite editor, and you can then export whatever graphics you want and use that with my tutorial code to save to the system. So we're using this option today, but you can see here it works with all of the kinds of things as well. And it even works with the, the latest version even works with the Sinclair QL. So I've got a lot of different systems I'm covering. It's open source as well. So you can download the source code and change it if you're not happy with the functionality of this program. So that's what I'm trying to give you. I'm trying to give you the experience to know how to do it. I'm trying to give you the tools to do it. And I'm always trying to give you all of the source code so that if you want to go further than I've covered, you can do that as well. And so hopefully this will give you a really good start and allow you to get programming and making what you want quickly without all the hassle of trying to work out how to do things. So anyway, let's get these out of the way. Let's have a look at the theory first. So how does the 68000 work with graphics? Well, the graphics chip is separate to the main system. It's two processors with two separate memory banks, but the graphics hardware's memory is memory mapped. So we can actually address it just by writing to bytes within the system memory in a linear fashion. It's not like we've got some port that we have to define the address we want to write to. We're just literally writing to to areas of memory. But the first thing we need to do is we need to get the screen set up. Now this is quite complicated. There are some websites online you can look at to read the details. One is the Games X website and then the other is the unfortunately Japanese X68000 technical manual. Now I can read Japanese so I can just about cope with this. But if you can't read Japanese it, it's unlikely it's going to be much use to you. But I, I'm afraid that is really the only resource other than Games X. Wherever there's something I think you need to know, I'll try and document it in English, but I can't go through the entire manual translating it because for all I know, no one would ever even read it. So if you have questions that I'm not covering well enough, try, please ask them and I'll see what I can do. But as I say, I'm trying to document everything I think you're going to need, and I'm certainly documenting everything you're going to need to do what I'm doing in these tutorials. So what the first thing we need to do is if we need to get out of the text mode because when the system boots up, it boots up into a DOS prompt. We need to switch to a graphics mode so that we can start writing graphics to the screen. And so what we need to do is we need to set this variety of registers here. Now, there are some sprite registers. We're not going to set those today because we're not using sprites in these tutorials at this stage. So we're going to be using these low resolution modes here. We're not going to bother with these high resolution ones. And we need to set all of these registers to these byte values here, depending on if we want 256 by 256 mode, 512 by 256 mode, or 512 by 512 mode. Now, in my tutorials, I tend to aim for a resolution of 256 by 192 because that's fairly common between 8 and 16-bit systems. So we can write a game on the Amiga, we can port it to the Atari ST, port it to the Amstrad CPC. You know, we can port it to everything if we're working at that kind of resolution, give or take, you know, except for the tie calculator and silly things like that. So we're going to be aiming for this resolution, but I have added support for these as I'll alternative resolutions if you want to use them. I'm not covering these resolutions, you're kind of on your own if you're going to use those. But these are the correct settings that we need to write to the ports to get the screen working once we've done that. Now once we've got the screen set up, we need to write bytes to the screen. And the screen is fairly logically laid out. The screen is a multi-layer screen so it can do parallax, but we're only going to be using page zero at the moment. And so all we need to do is write bytes to the memory address range C and five zeros here. 
and that will actually put the bytes straight into the video memory. That's all we need to do. It's very easy. The only slightly odd thing is, even though we're working in 16 color mode, where just one nibble is where each color is defined by just one nibble, we actually have to write in word chunks. And effectively, the top three nibbles of each word are not doing anything. It's kind of strange because whatever color depth we work in, one pixel is defined by one word. And it's, I think it's basically that these memory addresses are mapping to registers within the graphics hardware. And so the extra addresses are just simply being ignored. It's, it seems quite odd looking at it, but it's very logical once you get to it. Anyway, all of this information is on my website, but we're not going to look at it. We're actually going to look at the real source code. So here's the source code, and the first thing we need to do is actually set the screen up. So what I've done is I've set the system up so that if we define one of these symbols here, then we can select which screen resolution we want. And if we don't define any of them, it, it's going to default to 256 by 256. Now, if you look at these settings, they're actually all identical to the ones in here. But I don't think there's going to be really any case for you to want to change these. I think if you do, what you're probably going to find is that all that happens is the screen goes black or you start having trouble. So hopefully these are all already correct. So you can just leave them alone. So this is how we are setting up our screen. Now, once we've set our screen up, we're going to want to actually show the bitmap to the screen. So you can see here, we're showing this Chibico character here, and we're showing the Hello World text. We've got a command called print char here, and we can just pass this a letter into D0 and run that, and it's going to show a character from this one bit per pixel font here. And we're also going to have a print stream command, which will just use the print char repeatedly. That's pretty straightforward. The more interesting thing we're going to cover today, though, is the ability to draw a bitmap to the screen. Now, a lot of this code is for other systems like the um, Sinclair QL or the Genesis, but only this part is really what we're interested in today, the part that handles the bitmap-based systems. And the main bit we're interested in is this bit that handles the 68,000. Now, my AccuSprite editor will allow you to export to a wide variety of systems, but the format that it exports in is actually the native byte format for the screen of that system. And we do that because, of course, we don't want to waste time converting things unnecessarily. Now, in the x68000's case, there's a slight deviation from that. The 68000 uses one word per pixel, but only the bottom nibble of that word is actually in use in 16 color mode. So therefore, I'm exporting in two pixels per byte using each top and bottom nibble, and then we're splitting that up in software. Effectively, what I'm actually doing is we're using the same format as the MSX on the 68000. And you can see here we're including the bitmap binary file, and it's actually the MSX version. But my exporter will export the correct format if you select the x68000 from the, the option. It just happens to be the same format as the MSX. So we're defining this bitmap memory address here, and we're loading in the byte data for the screen here. And you can see here we are loading the effective address of the bitmap into A0. And then we're using this get screen pos with an x and y coordinate in D1 and D2. Let's have a look at that get screen pos command. So here it is. This is the command that will effectively convert an x, y coordinate in screen coordinates into a memory address that we can then write byte data to. Now on the x68000, here's what we're doing. First, we're stripping off all but the last byte of D1 and D2 so that we don't have any problems. We're not expecting a value above 255, you see. Next, what we're doing is we are rotating the X position one to the left because the 68,000 works in words, of course. We're then adding that to the screen's base, which is C and five zeros, as we discussed before. You can see that just here. At that point, we're then just clearing the bottom bit. We don't actually need to do this, but this is just for safety. The bottom bit should always be even, so we're just clearing that there. And then we're moving this into A6, because A6 is going to be the resulting memory address that we're going to want to start writing bytes to. We've now sorted out the X position, but we now need to sort out the Y position. On the 68,000, each line is 1,024 bytes wide, at least in screen memory addresses. So we need to multiply the Y coordinate by 1,024, and we do that by two consecutive bit shift here. We can't bit shift by 10, so we have to bit shift by 8 and then bit shift by 2 here. And then we add that, which is now the Y coordinate multiplied by 1024 to A6. And we've got this get next line command when we need to move down a line, which is having the same effect. Now, of course, calling this command is wasteful compared to just adding that manually. But the point is that this code should be common and should be able to run on as many systems as possible. If you see here, a lot of this code is actually being run on all of the systems. The get screen pause command, the get next line command is common no matter what the system is. And it's only the part that actually handles the reading of the byte data from the sprite memory and then writing it into the video memory that is actually platform specific. 
So here we're defining the screen position we want to show the sprite, and here we're defining the height and width of the sprite, and we've got a loop here because we need to loop for each line of the sprite. And what we're doing here is we're loading in from A0, which is the bitmap memory, and then we're splitting up and we're taking the top nibble, shifting it into the bottom nibble, and then we're loading it at the word level because as I've said the 68,000 the screen memory works in words rather strangely so we're loading in the word level into A6 and then we're incrementing A6 by one word. We're then taking the byte of the sprite memory again but this time we're increasing the memory address of the sprite memory because we've now exhausted that byte of the sprite memory. This time we're only using the bottom nibble and we're writing that straight to screen memory because the 68,000 will actually ignore the top nibble if we do this so yeah, we don't need to worry about that. So that's what we can do here and this is how we convert the data with two bytes per word into the 68,000's screen coordinates and that will work just fine. So well, how can we use this? Well if you wanted to replace my Chibico sprite with your own sprite what you would need to do is just select the correct position. So if we run this with the current settings we get Chibico here but if we change these around and we swap these to 2 and 64 and run this again you can now see the Chibico sprite is at the top in close to the middle. So we can easily reposition the sprite here, but if your sprite was a different size, you just need to change these here. So if I change this to 32, you'll see now we've only got half the sprite. And if I change this to 32, you can see we've now corrupted the sprite. And the reason for that is that the sprite's done in lines. And so we'd need to actually create a new sprite and export it with the correct size for that to work. But as I say, this is just an example today. So that's how we can print a sprite to the screen. Well, what about our one bit per pixel font that we're showing to the screen to do that hello world? Well, here's our print char command. And most of it's gonna be fairly similar to what we just saw. So I'm only gonna go through this fairly quickly. The other thing is there's some odd parts here relating to tall tiles. Now, in my Grind 68000, so you're going to learn about this. I added an extra function. Because the 68000 screen is squashed up compared to other systems, I was actually padding it out from 8 lines per character to 10 lines, and I was doing this by repeating two of the lines. But we're, we're not going to cover that in too much detail today. But essentially what we're doing here is we're reading an XY coordinate from memory positions defined as cursor X and cursor Y. Now these are going to work in character positions. So each character is 8 by 8 or 8 by 10 if we're working on that, system, that tall tile mode. And then we're going to multiply these to work out the pixel positions. But then essentially all we've got here is exactly the same as we had before. We're just now working in character positions rather than pixel positions. So again we're going to do a get memory position, effectively loading the memory position into A0. And then we're going to load in byte data from the font which is defined by the memory address font here and you can see that that is defined just down here here it is we've got this font file it's the same font file I use for my Z80 series and we are going to convert that as well so let's have a look at the details of what we're doing here so the first thing we're doing is we're loading in the font address just here now we need to work out the correct character position within that font now the first 32 characters of ASCII are symbols that aren't in that font, so we're having to subtract 32. Then we need to multiply the re result of that by 8, because each character has 8 lines, and each line is 1 byte. And so at this point, we've now loaded in the correct memory position for the character that we want to show to the screen into A1. We now need to work on the X and Y coordinates. What we do is essentially the same as before. However, this time we're loading in cursor X from a memory position rather than a register. We're keeping the bottom byte and then we're rotating it left by four positions. And this is to select the correct position for the character because each character is eight pixels. Now we need to add that to the start of the memory just as before. And we need to make sure the bottom bit is even. Now we're moving that into A0 here. And then what we're going to do is we're going to work with cursor Y. And so what we're doing is we're clearing the entire register here and then we're moving in the byte cursor position here. And effectively what we're doing here is we're multiplying the Y by 8 here and then we're multiplying that by 1024 here. And that will give us the correct offset for the Y position and then we're adding that to A0 again here. Now at this point we're ready to start actually drawing. So what we do here is we are defining the height of the character with this here. And in this tall tile mode, we're going to have to repeat two of the lines here. So there's a bit of tricky code here to do that, but you can just ignore that for the basics of printing the character. Essentially, what we're doing is we're printing eight characters to the screen. So we're going to use dbra, which goes, which repeats until it goes below zero. So we're loading in seven into d4 here for the x position. We're then loading in a byte for the entire line here into d0. And then we're popping off an individual pixel and we are 
shifting that into the color 15 position. Now for consistency across all the systems, I always use color 15 for my fonts or color four on four color systems. So that's why we're doing that. And we're just having to move that along and all it in to set all of the bits to one to make sure we're using color 15. And then we move that in at the word level into A0 and increment A0. So that is actually plotting the pixel to the screen. We need to repeat that for each of the bits within the current line. And then when we've done the line, we're doing an add A of 1024 minus 16 because we've just written eight words to the system memory. And so this is effectively moving the line down quickly. And then we're repeating for the next line. And we're of course doing eight lines for our font or 10 lines if we're using this tall tile mode. So that's how we can draw a character to the screen. Now the last thing we need to do once we've drawn a character to the screen is we need to actually move the cursor along. What we do is we increase X, but what we need to do next is see if the cursor has gone off the screen. So we're comparing to the width of the screen here, and if we have gone off the screen, we're running this new line command. Well, what's that new line command? Well, you can see it just up here. We've got some very simple commands here, which I'm not really gonna go into detail. Now the locate command will load in an X, Y coordinate and store them into the memory mapped variables here. The new line command just simply moves the Y cursor down and resets the X cursor here. We've also got this print string command here. This will load in a 255 terminated string and it will repeatedly use the print char command to print the string to the screen. So all of this is relatively straightforward here. It's really all just an extension of this get screen pause command here and this bitmap test example in this code here. Now one extra command I do briefly want to discuss is wait vblank. Now when I was creating Grime 68000 I needed a way to detect if the screen had started refreshing so that I could effect a pause that would be pretty consistent on all machines. I really found it hard to do this and so I eventually figured it out and so I just want to tell you about it now. There's a device on the 68000 called the MFP, which is a multifunction device, but it seems to collect in various uh, information about what's going on on the system. But the important one is bit four here, and this will allow us to actually detect if the screen has gone into vblank. So what I did in Grime 68000 was wait for vblank to start, and then wait for it to end, and that would allow me to test when the screen had started redrawing, and that gave me a, a consistent delay on all of the systems. So that's just something I wanted to let you know now before you have to search around and can't find it like I did. Of course, it's also on my website. So anyway, that's a quick introduction to how you can get bitmap graphics to the screen. All of these examples are available for download from my website, and you can download my AcuSprite editor with the sample sprite you saw today. So hopefully, if you want to get started, you'll be able to download this and have a go. Now, of course, the 68,000 is covered in my Grime 68,000 series, which is currently being presented once a week. And once that series is finished, you'll be able to download the source code to that complete game as well. And that's another thing that you can use as a starting point to create your own 68,000 games for the X68,000 and for the other systems. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this week's lesson. We're gonna be doing more on the 68,000 and we're gonna be doing these same bitmap graphic commands on the other 68,000 machines as well. Thanks for watching today and goodbye.